The Mr. Beast team has seen many people join and leave, but there are four people that solidified themselves as a part of the main crew, and those members are Chris, Chandler, Carl, and Nolan. However, despite Mr. Beast being one of the least controversial and most likable personalities on the internet, we can't say the same for the rest of his squad. So why are his friends so hated by the internet? And how does it affect the Mr. Beast brand? Well, it's time to dive deeper into the story. We're starting off with Chris Tyson, who is Mr. Beast's best friend and longest participating member of the crew. In fact, Chris knew Jimmy way before he even started his YouTube channel, as they go all the way back to elementary school, and he became the first Mr. Beast subscriber when the channel got launched. Chris, I've known him my whole life. Fun fact, right? He was actually my first subscriber. No joke, Chris was. He was here since day one. Jimmy and Chris would often make videos together, and despite the Mr. Beast channel growing more and more, Chris would always play a crucial part in the content being made, even today. So why is it that the best friend of Mr. Beast and his most loyal supporter from day one gets so much hate? Well, it wasn't always like this, as he was a fan favorite in the early days, but it all has to do with the following reasons. First of all, you're not following my Instagram, link will be in the description, sorry for the plug. The first actual reason is that Chris has quite an edgy past on YouTube. Back in the day, Mr. Beast uploaded a popular series on YouTube called Worst Intros, in which he and Chris made fun of Terra intros that were made by kids on the platform. These videos would often contain edgy jokes about drinking bleach, as that was quite standard and accepted back in 2016. But Chris decided to take it even further when making content on his own channel, and made comments that wouldn't cut it in today's society. Mr. Beast and Chris took down most if not all of these videos, but this wouldn't stop them from getting dug up. And he got a lot of criticism for his statements and edgy humor as he nowadays wants to showcase an image of spreading love and positivity. At one point, someone even got a hold of another video where he said the n-word, and found old tweets displaying Islamophobia, transphobia, and other terrible statements. Chris tried to delete everything while this drama was going on, but the damage was already done, and he came out with an apology on the 9th of April in 2021 to explain the situation. In this apology, he said that he isn't that same person anymore, and that he had a lot of hate for himself during that period of time which he let flow out through his humor and opinions. On top of that, he stated that he grew up in the south of the United States and that he picked up many views and opinions that he now strongly disagrees with. Also making a separate post for the transgender community explaining that he struggled with his own gender since he was 10 years old, and that he fully supports and loves them, once again apologizing to the other minorities as well. This apology got accepted by some, but rejected by plenty others, and it definitely put a dent in the reputation of Chris for the rest of his career. However, this wasn't the only only reason why Chris became so hated. Because a year before in 2020 he also let everyone know that he was bisexual. And at the end of 2022 Chris decided that he wanted to express himself more. He started showing pictures of painted nails, shaved his facial hair and changed the way he dressed. And this once again caused people to hate him. A lot of haters started negatively commenting about his appearance and that they missed the old Chris. But took it one step too far when they started sending him messages that he was going to be the reason that his son would end his life one day. Chris addressed this in a tweet on his alt account, and as a result decided to take a break from social media. However, people didn't think this was because of his past of struggling with his gender and bisexuality. No, there was someone to blame for it, and that person was Carl. The backstory of Carl is quite different, as he actually started out working for Mr. Bro as an editor and cameraman, the brother of Mr. Beast. But Jimmy and Chris liked him so much that they made him join their own team. CJ was like, I really like this Carl guy. I was like, really? You're like, what if I like him more? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay, let me try him. But despite Carl being widely popular among the Mr. Beast team, over time, this wasn't quite the case for the fans of the Mr. Beast channel. Carl is often nowadays referred to as the most hated Mr. Beast member. And this is due to various reasons. Reddit absolutely despises the man as there are countless of posts made about Carl ruining the videos and that he needs to get kicked. He was labeled as a cloud chaser for spamming famous people to play Minecraft with him. TikTok shared the same opinion.
opinion of Reddit that he ruins the videos. With the Twitter community hopping in as well by trending Carl's name and trying to cancel him for spamming an Ice Poseidon meme in someone's chat. And he also got criticism for his style and painting his nails just like Chris. In fact, he even got blamed for making Chris change his style. As this got popularized as the Carl effect. Now to not like someone is normal. As nobody can be liked by everybody. But to give someone so much hate for simply existing, doing his own thing and not liking his humor is quite absurd. However, Carl himself could actually laugh about the statement that he ruined Mr. Beast videos. I could be definitely polarizing. Like I'm loud sometimes. You know what I mean? I get if you don't like how I act, that, that's fair, whatever. And his answer to the hate was extremely professional. There's gonna be haters all the time. You just have to remember the people that are supporting you are more important at the end of the day. Which allows him to keep killing it on Twitch and YouTube, even though he barely streams and uploads on there. But now that we got two of the most controversial members out of the way, let's talk about one of the most popular. Chandler. Now Chandler actually started out as a janitor for Mr. Beast and was extremely shy at the beginning, even being afraid of talking to Jimmy himself. But when he got into a video for a small part, the fans started loving him and they wanted to see more of him on the channel. Chandler became a fan favorite and despite a few unpopular opinions that they can't stand Chandler, he has never really been hated the way that Chris and Carl have. However, there is something that flew under the radar for a lot of people that Chandler got quite a bit of criticism for and that was his own NFT project. Now yes, we know that NFTs have a very bad reputation on the internet, as it is often linked to countless scams and its bad environmental impact. And Chandler's new project wasn't received quite well by his audience either. Many thought he was hacked, called him out on supporting Save the Trees and Team Seas while supposedly destroying the environment with his NFT project, and generally had a lot of fans disappointed. But despite the criticism, he continued his project, and publicly released Strange Hands on the 7th of January in 2022. Each NFT would set you back around $288 at the time if you bought it at launch. And with 3,000 items sold, Chandler made around $862,000 with his project, which wasn't pure profit of course. However, did Chandler eventually run away with this money like everyone expected? And did he really damage the environment? Well, he is still working on the project and expanding it into a fashion brand. But a strange hand is currently only worth $31, as it has been hit hard by the crypto crash. So no, he didn't scam anyone, but people did lose quite a bit of money. And to answer if his project damaged the environment in any way, not really. The Ethereum network used to be quite energy intensive when it came to its operations and creating NFTs. But after switching to a proof of stake method, this is no longer the case. As the so-called merge reduced Ethereum's energy consumption by 99.95%, making NFT launches on the network more responsible. So was his NFT project a bad investment? Maybe. But at least his fans didn't get scammed. And finally, we have the last and newest member of the crew, Nolan. This member used to have his own channel called Trent Grave with over 2.6 million subscribers, on which he posted top 10 videos, but all of these have nowadays been deleted. The first contact between Nolan and Mr. Beast already happened in 2018 on Twitter, with them also sharing a picture together on Instagram in 2020. But his first official appearance in a Mr. Beast video was in the I spent $1 million on lottery tickets and one video in which he can be seen in the background. Now, not much is known about Nolan and how he started working for the Mr. Beast crew, nor is he the most popular member of the team. But Reddit of course had an opinion ready when he replaced Jake the Viking in the Mr. Beast crew, as they called it the worst trade in the world. But that wasn't even it, because they also said he was boring, annoying, obnoxious and plenty of people just hated him, which is in typical Reddit fashion. But apart from this, he didn't get into any major controversy or drama, which is the only blessing of flying under the radar. Also, he has a ton of fans that do love him and he continues being involved in content creation for Mr. Beast and tracks in a ton of views on his own TikTok page. Nolan is easily the most uncontroversial person of the crew, but that is also due to his lack of being in the spotlight. And I think he wants it to remain that way when he looks at his fellow team members. But what does Mr. Beast think about all of this controversy himself? Well, nothing, because he is a very smart man. He knows that commenting on all of these situations would only give it more attention or result in him getting backlash himself. So a Apart from him maybe advising his members what to do behind the scenes, he is not really involved in the public image of his fellow colleagues, which is the right thing to do. So after all of this, do you think that the hate is deserved or should the internet loosen up a little bit? Let me know in the comments down below and subscribe if you're new here, it is much appreciated.